Praise the Lord. So we are talking about um, the season of Christmas. It's beginning to look, excuse me, look like Christmas. And this is part two, where I'm going to focus in on uh, the subject of priesthood. Can anyone remember as far back as last week what we were talking about, what our focus was? It also began with the P. Prophet. We talked about Jesus as a prophet and the, the whole subject of prophecy. So if you, know, if you want to go back over the notes and everything like that and just kind of connect the two together, you'll see that um, on the website there's a place for the notes there. But, you know, if we look at Christmas now, if our first slide here, we see trees, we see tabernacles, we see the virgin birth, priests, high priests, incense, shepherds, sacrifice, prophets, and the wise men. So, you know, a lot of people, this is just a swirl of stuff that they're, they're experiencing in this season of time. They've read the story, perhaps, and now they're wondering, well, what's it all about? How to connect these dots? What, what are some of the focuses? Well, we're not going to be able to cover all of the territory here in this session, certainly not next week, where we're going to be focusing in on Jesus as the king. So prophet, priest, and king is kind of a development there. But we'll focus a little bit on Jesus as the high priest. Now, what's that got to do with Christmas and, and everything like that? Well, let's try and connect some of those Christmas dots here. And I've, I've, I make the point here that if you have a high priest, you must have a regular set of priests. Because the high priest would be the top of the order, like the order of nuns or the Carmelites or whatever it is. Have, you know, the Catholic Church, they have various orders and they have various rules and they have a system. Well, in the priesthood back in the day, they had the high priest and then they had a whole series of priests underneath them. And they had certainly a focus on a tabernacle or a place of meeting. That's what the word tabernacle means. And because God comes to tabernacle with us here on the, on, on the earth through Jesus, right now, this time where heaven has connected with earth, isn't it amazing that God is in the business of wanting to meet with us? A meeting is where two parties, at least, come together and face each other for a particular purpose. And so you could only get up close to God in the whole tabernacle system through the priesthood where sacrifices were offered. And you can see, if you look down on the slide here, you can see the altar of sacrifice. Can you picture in your mind the portable tabernacle that was set up in the, in, in the middle of the wilderness where they had various um, artifacts and various things going on in the tabernacle. So that's what you get in our next slide, which is kind of an overview here, where you have uh, towards the bottom left here, you have that altar of sacrifice where animals were actually slaughtered, blood was shed, and then they were sacrificed and the, uh, the, sac the sacrifices were burnt on the altar. The priests had to clean themselves in the labor, and as they progressed further and further up into the top right hand corner there, they got closer and closer to the presence of God which was contained in, can anyone remember Indiana Jones? The Ark of the Covenant? You know, it's a box. And God was, what was in the box? Anyone remember what was in the box? Any of the scholars here, starting with Elaine? Mm -hmm. I, didn't watch. <laughs> I didn't watch Indiana Jones no, much no. either. But, but you know, through, throughout, throughout the Bible record, you get little clues as to what was in the box. And so what was in the box, Jenny? Aaron's rod that budded. Aaron's rod that budded. Who was Aaron now? Moses' bro, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he was, the, he was the high priest of the time. Yeah. And then there was high priests that follow on after Aaron passed on. But Aaron's rod that budded, what else? And the manna, a little manna. pot of manna. And then the big one, which was there, two tablets, which is panado or paracetamol. You know, yeah, take two tablets and Frank. see in the morning. Oh, no. What did you say, Frank? The Ten Commandments. And so that was in the, in the, in the Ark, of the, the Ark of, the, of the Covenant. And there were angels on the presence there. And that was where the high priest, once a year, would put, put blood on that altar. So there was a, like a progression of altars. And before you got that, um, which is a kind of a little bit of the focus that I want to give in our next slide, you'll see a cutaway as we get into that, that inner tent, the Holy of Holies, a cutaway with an altar of incense circled there by the black, you know, the black line there. That altar of incense was where um, uh, various sacrifices were made of incense only, not blood this time. The blood was shed outside 
in that other altar that we saw in the previous slide. But now at, at the incense altar, incense um, uh, was offered. And uh, well, we're going to get to what the significance of it is because, you know, there's a lot of historical information in the Bible, but how does it actually apply to us today? Because it's there historically for us for a purpose. God puts it in there, inspired scripture for a purpose. And so we want to try and extract out of it the purpose for our lives. So let's dive back into the Christmas kind of scenario in our next slide where Jesus, excuse me, is presented to the Lord after 40 days of when he was born. So it was a custom of the, you had 40 days to get to the temple wherever the child was born. And we know that the child was born in Bethlehem, and Bethlehem is a few miles from Jerusalem. So it was very close, close enough for, for um, a, maybe a day or so's walk. And uh, I don't know exactly the scenario, but they brought Jesus to the temple area. And we see here the record in Luke chapter 2, verse 22 and 24. Now when the days of her pur purification according to the law of Moses, because she'd brought the baby, she'd shed blood and so on, uh, was, was completed, they brought him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So they were functioning under the law covenant. They were doing everything they were supposed to do. And then in verse 22, 24, we get a clue as to what was going on. And to offer a sacrifice. Offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. And this is what it was said in the law of the Lord for different categories of people. A pair of turtle doves and two or two young pigeons. Now you could bring sheep or you could bring an oxen depending on your wealth status. So it appears at this point in time at least that Mary and Joseph were of simple means and that they brought a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons as their sacrifice. They didn't bring a sheep or they didn't bring a, um, a goat or they didn't bring an ox depending on your wealth status. Now later on after the wise men came, they came with these chests of gold, silver, uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and boy, that was wealthy stuff. And so they 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 took a, a a leap up in their wealth fortunes when when the wise men came. But basically, what happened in the in in the temple scenario was that in Jerusalem when they came there with Jesus, is that the priests would help you offer these sacrifices. And so when we look at our next slide here, you can see a picture. Um, in the general picture of the priests there standing at the altar, the one outside now where the blood was presented. And this was all happening at the altar of sacrifice where under the law or the Mos of the Moses system, you had these priests and then you had the high priest. Everybody say high priest. high priest. The high priest had a significant role in the nation, especially at one time of the year. And so Jesus, getting back, more specifically to this whole Christmas uh, scenario. Jesus was born at Christmas. Isn't that right? Wasn't Jesus born at Christmas? December the 25th? Okay. He was born a couple of weeks after Black Friday and Cyber Monday and everything like that. But the funny thing about it, we're going to talk about that next week a little bit, exactly when Jesus was born. What month? Etc, etc. But just a heads up there. But he grew up, Jesus actually grew up to be a priest. Now he was, certainly was a rabbi, we know him, uh, the title that was given to him was rabbi, and then also rabboni, kind of a, a, a senior rabbi or teacher. But he grew up as a priest. But he wasn't hooked into the system that was going on in Jerusalem. He didn't have to go and play his role according to the way the system had evolved from the time of Moses all the way through to the time of Jesus. It was thousands, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. So, this is where we get a little bit theological and try to connect where we are today. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 17, it says this, And the psalmist pointed this out when he prophesied. So it's talking about a reference to the Psalm 110, verse 4. You are a priest, talking about Jesus now, prophetically speaking. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. My goodness, now Melchizedek comes into the picture. Who the heck is Melchizedek? Who is Aaron? Moses, Melchizedek, Jesus, God, 
covenant? Where are all the dots connecting here? Well, we get little clues as we go on through the scripture that Jesus was a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. That's why he was not running around doing his, serving time and waiting for moments of opportunity, which they had a roster and everything like that, where you would go up to the temple and you would start to burn incense here and you'd serve at that part of the temple and you'd take care of this business over here and you'd do that over there. Jesus didn't function that way. He functioned under the priesthood of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek is a kind of a mysterious figure that way back in the time of Abraham, Abraham, before Moses even came along in the law, Melchizedek was a high priest. A priest of what? A priest to the Most High God, to God Himself. And so Jesus came in under the order of Melchizedek and functioned there. But whereas Aaron came in under the order of Moses, and when Aaron died, they had to find another high priest. And when that high priest died, they had to find another high priest. And they had to qualify for that high priesthood and function as a high priest from year to year and continually offer sacrifices over and over and over and over again. Every year there was a whole slew of sacrifices that they do. And one of the big ones, the big, big, big one. Can anyone remember what day of the year in the Jewish spiritual calendar is the most significant one when it comes to a relationship with God. Does anyone have a, have a clue? Passover is where he, Jesus was sacrificed as, as the lamb. But for the nation of Israel to function for another year, what day was it? Jenny, did you? The day of atonement. The day of atonement. Which I think is called Yom Kippur. No, no, Rosh Hashanah is the new year. I think it's Yom Kippur is the, uh, the, the Jewish name. And forgive me if I don't have all of the details and <coughs> names connected up there. But the Day of Atonement was when the high priest took the blood right into the, the, the most secret part of this whole temple tabernacle scenario. Where the Ark of the Covenant was. Where the, the angel, the cherubims, were, had their wings overspread. And they had this mercy seat on top of the box. Which had the pot of manna, the two tablets... And the Aaron's rod that budded, there were significant of different things. There's just significance in everything there. But the high priest, once a year, would go in and he would present the blood for himself. And he would present the blood for the whole nation, once a year. And they tied a rope to him, that if he made any mistakes and he... Uh, he got, he got snuffed in the process because the unholiness of his mistake met with the holiness of God and something had to give. And so the, the, they had bells and they had pomegranates on their, their big clothes. Have a look at the, the slide here with the, the high priest. He had a bad day. That's why he's looking like he is. <laughs> he's got a frown on his face. Anyway, I'm just kidding. But back then, the whole nation standing to get to the point now with God depended on the high priest sacrifice once a year at the atonement. And he would present this blood. And as a result, everyone in the nation, get this now, this is, this is quite something to think about. Everyone in the nation that called himself a Jew by faith, trusting in Jehovah God, or the God of the Bible, when they, when, when they went through the system, and the high priest poured the blood out on the, on the altar, the mercy, the mercy seat altar, at the, the Ark of the Covenant, right in that Holy of Holies, and it, and it was accepted by the Lord, the whole nation was sanctified. The whole nation was sanctified for a whole year. Now, individually, if people had to come and give a sacrifice like um, Mary and Joseph did because they had a baby and they needed to be purified and offer a sacrifice, they all, when you put all the pieces of the puzzle together, they all amounted to an understanding that God had made a way for them to come close to Him and meet with him at this place of meeting the tabernacle. They could draw near, that's the definition of the word priest, to, to Almighty God. And if you, you and I sit here, you know, we're sitting in sort of regular circumstances, we get in our cars and we drive off and, and we go home and we get, go to our place of residence and everything like that. And everything just seems so ordinary. It's just that we're familiar with it and everything. And yet God holds everything together by His grace and by His love. And in that ordinariness, we can draw near to Him and be as close as we want as priests because we have a high priest. 
And our second point there is today, all believers worldwide depend on Jesus as our high priest. So we're trying to connect some of the dots here. Jesus as our high priest is in good standing with God Almighty and his good standing with God Almighty because he presented his blood on the altar sanctifies is the technical term the whole nation of believers worldwide so your and my sanctification and security of relationship with God is dependent not on how we conduct our lives and do certain things and and get up to Christian Christian you know endeavors and pray and read our Bibles and go to church and partake of communion and and we put all those pieces together and we think if we do this and we check that box and we do this and we check that box and everything then we'll be okay with the Lord a lot of people function that way perhaps you and I function that way that when things get out of sorts and everything we think man if I if I just fast and I just pray a little bit here and I do this that, and the next thing then then everything between me and God will be okay well that's not how God said, sees it God sees it that when Jesus as our high priest presented his blood on the altar then because we have faith in Jesus everything is okay in our lives now the enemy will come along and he'll say otherwise of course but nevertheless let's have a look at some more scriptures to see whether a connection can be made even closer Jesus sacrifice of blood on the cross as high priest our next slide was unique now the word unique means one of a kind and in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 27 it says who does not need daily so we're trying to contrast between how everything was done with Moses and Aaron and the law and how it's done under Jesus like those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people because this he did once for all when he offered up himself see that scripture they highlighted there this he did once say once, once. for what or when he offered up himself so when jesus went in uh, you know metaphorically speaking and was placed on the altar of the cross on the tree golgotha and everything that in god's mind was like the high priest offering the blood of animal sacrifices on the mercy seat once a year from animals that had been slaughtered the sheep and so on the, the lambs well it's unique once and for all once and for all so if that's true what are we doing trying to offer sacrifices to God to try and make right with God who offered himself to make right with us just doesn't cut it in his economy let's have a look at another scripture the power in Jesus's blood in Hebrews chapter 9 verses 24 through to 28 this is how it reads for Christ did not enter the holy place made with hands a mere copy of the true one but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us nor was it that he would offer himself often like every year year in and year out as the high priest enters the holy place year by year with blood that is not his own otherwise he would have needed to suffer what often since the foundation of the world but now he has this point again once at the consummation of the angels he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself I think the point is being made strongly here just in case you want another scripture here's one from Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 but he having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time sat down at the right hand of God when he was raised from the dead he went and sat down at the throne now why would he sit down if there was work yet to be done there wasn't any work to be done he said it is finished and see on the notes there it's finished I've done it I've sacrificed my blood once for all so what's there left to do but to look at this and say thank you God I put my trust in Jesus my high priest he's done it once for me for all time everything is clear so he reigns he reigns as a king now that's why religion fights this so much uh, so intensely 
is because it's such a liberating truth to know that Jesus has done it once and for all. Look at this last scripture that I give you before we take communion now. Just another just in case. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering of his own blood on the cross, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. So we're set apart, not by what we do. He we set apart, made holy, sanctified for God's purposes in life by what Jesus has done for us as our high priest. Now I shared with you a couple of sessions ago that the Bible describes you and I as priests. And what is the, 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 the essence of a priest? But someone who draws near to God. And we draw near to God on the basis of blood that has already been shed on an altar of sacrifice. So is, do we have to go and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem and start sacrificing animals to try and get, get, you know, get everything perfect, perfect at this time and fulfill everything? No, everything has been fulfilled by Jesus as our high priest and we can now draw near to him and stay near to him on the basis of what he has done. So the confessions that we make Remember I talked about confession of sin and confession of faith in the Lord. The confessions that we make are not so much of the sins and where we've fallen short, but confessions of the grace and the mercy of God that has established us in a place of favor and sanctification before Him. It's not based on what we do, it's based on what He does. And all that is left, all that is left, if we look at the communion slide that we've got now, Go back to the communion slide there. Yeah. So what's there left for us to do? Is to offer on the, sac on, on the altar of incense sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving for what he's done in our lives. Mm. Now, we've, it, it might take some meditation on that and thinking of that. And so when we, when we finally look at the next picture there, you'll see, I've, I've given a little bit more detail You'll see on that one there, the altar of incense, which was that cutaway just before you went into the Holy of Holies. The altar where the blood was shed was right out there already. But there's the altar of incense. It's a golden altar for burning incense. And this incense really amounts to, if you can just summarize in one word, worship. A worship offering by those whose sins are already forgiven by Jesus' blood. And that truly sets us free because we, we want you to walk in the freedom that God has achieved for us, not in the freedom that we're trying to, to carve out for ourselves by our Christian lifestyle. It's a very, very, very powerfully liberating uh, understanding that I believe the Lord wants us to have this morning. So Jesus' high priestly sacrifice on the cross allows us to draw near to God. Amen. Question? Yes. So when the Lord was crucified, it said that the veil was rent and yes. torn. That means that at that moment that he became, he was he's the high priest. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was, he was always the high priest, but he, he performed the high priestly act of his blood being presented on the altar, which allowed for that division from the presence of God to be opened up to all believers that were, were drawing near to him in the tabernacle. And so, Sue, would you mind just coming and helping me um, serve the communion this, this morning? That's what we plan to do. And so let's just worship the Lord together at this time. Amen.